All right. So normally we would do a uh, recording, uh, a annual AMV recording. But this time we're gonna get started around with the uh, the annual, not the annual, but we'll try to get a new series going here. The ML Theater uh, side story. See if we get that going. So let's go in here. This actually was requested a while back. Did you know? This world of ours, though it seems ordinary at first glance, is overflowing with boundaries, boundless mysteries. You may not notice it if you go about your daily routine and don't give it much thought. But if you pause for a moment and observe your surroundings, you'll begin to notice the true wonders of life in a way that you would never have imagined before. All right, this is Sage Ball, the ML unit. Uh, much like the miracle that has intertwined our fates once again, here's this place. I'm sorry? Who am I, you ask? Ah, yeah, of course. I suppose some of you may be meeting me for the first time. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ball, and this quiet little lady in my arms is Sizan. Well, to be more precise, this doll is a container for Sizan's soul. I have spent many years researching a way to bring her back. In my quest for knowledge, I have traveled to multiple universes, both within and with without our dimension. Alas, I have ended up learning where the fewer principles of interdimension travel. On the bright side, during my travels, I had a most intriguing encounter. I believe it was after completing my exploration of Nixie Sanctum of Orvis around the time I, I returned to life on my, on my home world. All right, let me adjust the volume here just a little. See if we can get a little bit more output. All right, here we go. Adjust it a little bit more. I think, uh, okay, that should be good. Per usual, I was prepared to give consultations to the locals of the nearby village. And let me turn down the game volume just a little too. All right, here we go. Much better. And within the harvest coming to an end, a festival was being planned at the castle. Naturally, the villagers were going to come seeking my sagacious advice on what to sell at said vessel. But then I saw my old friend, the trust, trusty mercenary captain, Armin, running towards me, shouting. Ball! There's no need to shout, Armin. You are standing right in front of me. I'm so glad you're home. I don't know what I would have done if you were away traveling again. Ah, fret not. I just returned from an exceedingly long trip, so I tend to remain home for the foreseeable future. But that aside, is there an issue with your mercenary company? Why have you come to see me in such a rush? Ah, oh, well, the thing is... Armin pulled me by the hand and led me deep into the forest, where traces of humanity became fewer and farther between. There, I witnessed a powerful and corporal mass of light with my expert judgment. I deduced that this light was coming from a different world. Yet, what was more surprising was that this light was manifesting itself in the shape of a person. A young girl with wings of the purest white. So this is Angel Light Angelica? I tried my best to maintain composure, but my scholarly instincts were crying out. That entity, that entity was no normal life form. Ball. Ball. Indeed, it far transcended our level of understanding. Ball, stop. Ah, uh, what? You know that we shouldn't be talking about Angelica. You did the same thing last time, too. Ah, yes, I seem to have gotten a little carried away. It became uncharacteristically talkative. Now, are you sure about uncharacteristically? Well, I intend to detail the intent. I did. I intended to detail this moonlight concept that occurs on Orvis. I deviated a little too far from the original topic and almost shared some rather unnecessary information. To get back on topic, there's a phenomenon where two beings from different universes appear to share the same face, such as the young wing girl in our High Priestess of the Blue Cross. So he's referring to Angelica of Light and the regular Angelica. Your world is calling the term Moonlight to describe this. 
I believe the term was derived from folklore. There's a legend where if you make a sincere wish on the night of a full moon, an identical clone of yourself will appear and help you in time of need. It is certainly a romantic idea, but from a purely academic standpoint, the lack of substan sustained empirical evidence has rendered this hypothesis highly impossible. Well, excluding a few outliers where such and such meta past version of themselves or came across in automatic doll manufactured in their likeness. In most cases, these out lookalikes are visitors from another world. In other words, they aren't just copies, but genuine people with their own distinct sense of self. So yeah, he was referring to Maid Chloe and Lots and Tywin. As such, the claim that both you and your moonlight alter ego will vanish upon encountering one another is a little more spurious superstition. Oh yeah? You won't believe it until you see it, you say. That is precisely why I prepared a little experiment. Mr. Ball, Miss Cezanne, would you please come join us on stage? A pleasure to meet you all. As you have likely guessed, my name is Ball, and here's my teacher. I am Cezanne, the great magician. Observe everyone, we both stand here, face to face, close enough to touch, and nothing. Nobody has vanished, nor has the universe collapsed in on itself. So there you have it, so they can, co they can coexist with each other. Well duh, that's exactly, what, what exactly is the point of this experiment? To prove that you're an irredeemable idiot in every universe? But my lady, unlike me, he's apparently a reputable mage, back in his own world, of course. Huh, how do you know he just didn't make that up? Isn't he sage ball? Doesn't that just mean he was no good at magic, then moved on to scholarship instead? Wouldn't a truly reputable mage have chosen a more dignified name like Great Magician Ball instead? Oh. Ah, now that you mention it, his Hassan seems to be in quite bad state. Perhaps I am a more talented one after all. So notori. Don't get ahead of yourself. You're both still idiots. Oh, well, you two may return to your seats now. We can't find our way there. We, we can't find our our own way there. So don't you dare call that mercenary who tries acting cute all the time. Ha! Huh. What an interesting pair. Mm, always so pleasant to talk to. I see the Cezanne of this world is, is highly intelligent, intelligent, wise, and sophisticated. Though her personality is a little different from my Cezanne. Yeah. Stop lying to you? I'm afraid I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. I'm awfully sorry, but would you mind speaking up a little? What's that? Everyone here knows Cezanne is... A ventriloquist dummy. Oh, you're quite the community, aren't you? There are certainly a lot of witty people in the audience today. And why is our lovely guest seated? Oh, there you are. All the way in the back. Well, thank you for your contribution. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Um, Arvin. I've already written down their seat number. As reliable as always. Also, please restrain them in their seat before the end of the show, just in case they uh, try to run away. I'm on it. You can always count on me. Ah, this was only supposed to be a short introduction before the show started, but I think I've been holding you for far too long already. That's just how much I treasure you all. It is thanks to your intellectual curiosity that this deity even exists at all. So yeah, 10 minute intro. Now, on to today's tale. Using the power of magic and science, I have created a vivid representation of various interesting events I've heard about or witnessed personally while traveling through various dimensions. Certain parts have been slightly edited to aid with your understanding, while others may feel vague or unclear as a result of my memory or having only heard the tale secondhand. But rest assured, most of what you will see did happen, albeit in a different world you cannot person personally visit. Now, without further ado, I present to you. Are you ready? I'll lead the way. Don't worry. Our first story takes place in this universe. It's a long story, so we had to divide into several seasons. Today, we'll start with the first one. I highly recommend this story. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll just do act one and then call it a uh, video. 
Now the god nor devil exists. As Vivian and Stage rank will wait for Meteor Coward to return to the stage hideout and unexpected danger approaches. So here's the cast rewards. Oh you get all these rewards. What is oh this is just go just skip ahead I guess. Or oh, if you have them you get the reward. Ah that's nice. You can receive cash reward if you own them. Okay. Are these tickets? I see. So those are like the, the skip, I suppose. Alright, let's watch. In Moonlight Theater, you cannot skip stories. We like to watch the story. That's what we're here for. I don't mind waiting. Of course, I prefer not to, but that's not how the world works. Loss and recovery. Departure, then return. If you think something is gone, you will see it again before long. Accepting that you cannot give meaning to everything. That some things will forever remain unpredictable, incomprehensible. That is true wisdom. Instead, you must wait patiently for the light, for the right time to come. Once you can finally stop longing for your precious person who you took for granted while they were by your side. So this is most likely uh, Sage Vivian talking. A gift of wisdom will present itself to you and make you be grateful to be alive. Still, I wish you would come back home. And she's talking about Cowric? Well, I'm stuck here taking carbuckles on walks. You're probably enjoying every moment of your travels across the continent. Once in a blue moon, you come home, but you're always empty-handed. Even after I told you about the many things I've been curious about that are only sold in Perlin. Ah, you better not be frolicking out there with some floozy. Vivian? Oh, Rango. Were you talking... Were you taking Craven for a walk? Ah, uh, yeah, Rango, but I thought you were resting today. Weren't you feeling unwell? That was my intention, but then Craven dragged me out here. Me out here. Craven. Carvin. But I have Carvin with me right... Uh, Carvin. Carvin. You must have been distracted by something. Carvin ran over to me and was begging me to play. Carvin, you and I are going to have a talk later. I'm so sorry, Rango. No need. The fresh air will, will do me good. Still, it's chilly. You should get back inside. Sure, why don't you, why don't you accompany me back? Were you out there waiting for Calric? We only just received word yesterday, so it will still be a week or more until he's back. No, uh, I just thought Carvin could use a walk, so... Weren't you walking here just this morning? Uh, yeah, but uh, it seems that worrying about him is weighing on you heavily. It's true, he said he was coming through Aachen, but they're in the middle of a war with Perlin. I see, you shouldn't fret too much. No matter how heated the fighting gets, they won't recklessly attack a mediator. I sincerely hope so. Oh, what's that noise? Is it Carvin? No, she's right here. Oh, it's coming from my laboratory. That stone. I found it in the woods a few days ago. The corrupted energy it was emanating was so powerful I thought I should bring it back for further observation. Yes, I remember, but it wasn't glowing like this before. No, it wasn't. Nor was it in this morning. And more importantly, it wasn't moving either. It must be reacting to something. How very strange. An impure perfection. It's certainly corrupted, but since no human influence in its creation, this is pure, pure madness. What was that? Rango, look around us. Keep calm, Vivian. This is only an illusion, though an extremely dangerous one. An illusion? Identify yourself, pure flame, fiery magic, fiery energy. I feel the heat of Malachus yet. There's also madness and malice I have never felt before. Evil purified, rage distilled. I am the inferno that will consume your world. My seething flames will devour everything. I am Malachus. Impossible. You cannot deceive me. I have seen Malachus with my own eyes. I am not the same Malachus you met, and I have neither the reason nor the intention to deceive you. You are of no interest to me. 
My purifying blaze will burn from the bodies of the foolish. Will burn the, from the body of the foolish, and they will find value as my fuel. Vivian, yeah, it's coming for you. You will be turned to ash, from which pure fury will, will blossom. So I'm guessing this is an uh, infernal Kawazu, because uh, he took the power of Malachus. That's what his backstory is. That is your fate. I can't move. What's happening? I completely let myself fall for this. I was careless. Foolish girl, you will become a symbol for a great loss. Now, the flame of the moment burns away. What's that noise? What is this thing? Now, nature's luster. Fools. We're back. Car. That's right, you saved us. That's a relief. Rango. Duh. Are you okay? I suppose I pushed my, myself too far this time. Oh, Rango, this is all my fault. Do not blame yourself. I don't have much time left anyway. Vivian. Yes, Rango? I'm sorry for set, setting Calric on the path he's on. Both of you are so young, and your time together too fleeting to be separated like this. Don't think that way, Rango. I was so happy when he became a mediator. I'm glad you and Calric are like family to me. Rango. I'm so happy I was able to meet both of you. So am I. Vivian, listen to me. Yeah. Now my duty falls to you. Protect this land. Sage Vivian. The Omen. So he's at the barracks. He made it to Aachen. I didn't know you'd be coming somewhere so dangerous, sir. Please call me Calric. We met before in southern Aachen, remember? Ah, uh, yes, Calric. I remember you now. How may I help you with this time? I heard something interesting back in the exile colony. Oh, I wouldn't put much faith in anything you hear there. You wouldn't be the first to say that. So what brings you here? Surely you didn't risk your life visiting a battlefield just to follow up on the drunken ramblings of some exiles. I'm hoping to learn more about Ray Damas. You're out of luck, I'm afraid. Our doctor here is called Ainz. He's terrible at his job. He's always st stealing the meds for himself. But at least he doesn't cause any real headaches. Ah, Ainz. I guess that's the, the criminal and the uh, common one. By real headaches, I assume you're referring to the taboo experiments? May I see the permit from Furious? Here. Furious was the one that personally requested this investigation. Dang it. My family has was close with Damas, so I spent a lot of time with Ray growing up, since we were similar in age. Then the older we got, it became clear to me that, how do I say this? We have different values in life. And you've not been in contact as of late? I heard he was leaving the exile colony. Even there, he has become infamous for certain incidents. But what interest is, is he to a mediator like yourself? Is this about the terror fragment? Does Furious know? To an extent. Let me be clear. It has nothing to do with me. I've had nothing to do with him ever since he began doing the things he did. I see. Can you tell me where he went? Ashley, let me rephrase that. Have you heard any rumors about where he may be going? And that's the end of Act 1. Right there. Uh, I'll try to keep these, these uh, segments to like 30 minute marks here. So for now, because... <laughs> Uh, because I did the intro and the, uh, the act one, we're almost at 30 minutes here. So I feel like act two would push it over the edge of 30 minutes. So next week, we'll see if we can cover two acts, act two and three, and see if that puts us in the, uh, in the, in the 30 minute bracket. But yeah, so that's how we started right there. Quick summary there. Uh, Vivian went to the, uh, I guess this is the end of video summary in case people didn't want to get the whole gist of it. Uh, so Vivian, uh, 
saw a stone. They got transported to a different world. They saw Malicus. Cra uh, Carvin saved them. And uh, Meteor Cowric made it to Aachen. And he's looking for Damas. Uh, yep. So that's the summary right there. So please let me know if um, what you think about the series. If not, I could do something else. I'd like to see something be incorporated. Maybe like a, a trees and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. So thanks for watching if you made it this far. And uh, next week we'll see if we can uh, record the next part and do uh, Act 2, which is Remnant Violet's part. Alright, take care.